Hey, Weather Warriors, in this video, we're talking about a large and funky snowstorm that could be tracking through the east central half of the United States as we head towards this weekend. Now, all hazards are possible, and that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. Now, before we begin, click the subscribe button below. If you like daily detailed forecast breakdowns just like this, we go much more in depth. We go on the long range, and we also teach you these weather forecasting techniques as well. So welcome to the channel if you're new. Let's just get right into it here. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at the models, track this day by day. Then we're gonna look at previous storms in history and compare that with the setup because we gotta look at more than just models here. So this is the storm right now. If you look out here out in the west, you got your little low kind of hanging out here. It's uh, starting to scoot on to the coast. You got some snow out here in the west, you know, especially in Northern California. This is going to uh, not be major for the West Coast, okay? The upper level energy isn't terribly impressive up there, but as this thing moves to the east, this thing's going to blow up. What I want you to do is keep an eye on this high pressure to the east. This is going to be very important as this moves out into the plains here and farther east. Now, as we head towards Friday, this is around 12 uh, Z, this thing is starting to get its act together a little bit more. You can see these pressure it's starting to deepen when the pressure deepens it sends a response it essentially is sucking more air up on the north side and the south side depends but you know that's kind of the general gist and it creates lift in the atmosphere juice for these storms to really get going and you can actually see whoops you know as we get towards friday evening here the snow really starts to blow up so this is friday around 1 p.m so just kind of out in the uh, evening hours, a little bit before then, and you can actually see that this is a different type of snowstorm. This is different than other setups because what we're going to be dealing with here is this high out to the east. There's a lot of uh, extra cool air kind of hanging out on the east side of these snowstorms. Now, usually with uh, snowstorms, with general good snowstorms, you get a lot of cold air on the uh, the northwest side and your heaviest snow is going to be on the northwest side this storm is going to be different and a lot of our snow is going to be out ahead of it you can see right here here's your blue that's going to be your snow around friday evening and it's going to be generally in uh, minnesota iowa illinois northern missouri and even some ice and uh, mixed precipitation as well i don't think that's going to be a huge threat but it will be a conditional threat for a few hours before switching to rain with this type of system it's very fast and progressive but nonetheless a little bit of ice in there there's a lot of dry air in the middle of this thing um and uh, so you're not getting that classic look and you get a lot of snow all the way up into canada so this thing is very large but it is very funky looking as we head towards saturday this thing really starts to get its act together as it tracks through kansas city nebraska again the heaviest snow on this particular storm is going to be on the northeast side okay along and north of the warm front so a little bit farther north of that warm front you know 50 100 miles and you're eventually going to get cold enough air as you go up the slope of the warm front where it will change to snow the high pressure out here and the extra cold air is kind of uh, helping this out for you to get snow on the east side so usually you get rain to snow well this actually could be a snow to rain to snow again type of event if you live kind of right along that warm front so a little bit different this is uh saturday in the morning the biggest batch of snow is going to be here in the midwest minnesota wisconsin michigan the dakotas and all way up into canada okay this is a very widespread wave but the low pressure is not particularly strong it's only about a thousand five millibars so you're not really going to see a whole heck of a lot of heavy snow with this thing it's going to be a nice big widespread moderate to uh, light, light to moderate snow so I'm not forecasting a major event even though it looks scary this is not a major storm I would say you know it qualifies for a big snowstorm but you know major is kind of an opinion I, I generally think this is going to be max a six to nine inch event so you know a decent snowstorm for some folks in the north central midwest northeastern United States but not you know one two three feet type of uh, event um, and, you know, the high pressure is pretty far to the north out here. If this was a little bit closer and we had a little bit more of some wraparound, and I'll show you that in a second, we would have a, a very powerful snowstorm. And I'll show you what's causing that here in a second. As we head towards Saturday afternoon, this is around 1 p.m., your low pressure system 
does start to strengthen. It gets out to a 996, so we are deepening a little bit. Very nice cold front out ahead of it. Pretty windy. And you'll also notice that the isobars are, the pressure lines, are actually really tight on the east side. Usually they're tighter on the northwest side or the west side, and so you get very stiff, cold north winds. It's going to be breezy here, don't get me wrong, in Minnesota and Iowa on Saturday with cold, stiff winds. But the winds out ahead of this thing are going to be kind of breezy. So as you head towards Saturday in the mid-Atlantic and northeastern United States, Pennsylvania and New York especially, you're going to have some breezy south, south winds kind of come out into that region. And it's also going to be snowing, so kind of a unique scenario where you have lots of snow but also south winds and maybe even warming temperatures throughout the day as this thing moves to the east. You can see it moves to the east and you actually get a little bit, look at those thickness lines. So those are your temperature lines, your average temperature in the atmosphere. You can see that 540 line kind of stationary, might even move north in some of that area. But you get kind of a mixed mode kind of creep back in as we head towards Saturday night around 7 p.m. So there could be some, you know, near the warm front and that's going to be near Pennsylvania, maybe West Virginia, Virginia. And this thing has been tracking a little bit to the north. So that's another thing, a north northwest track to this thing, a trend. And I believe that will continue moving just a little bit farther northwest. But Pennsylvania, New York, going to be snow at first. You might see a patch of rain and then snow again on the back side. But because that high pressure is you know, so far to the northwest and this low pressure system is starting to shear out and die out already, it's not going to be particularly heavy snow on the back side of this cold front it's just going to be a light kind of uh, flurry you know maybe some light bands of uh, moderate to heavy snow but very very isolated nothing terribly crazy that exits the region sunday around 1 p.m with some leftover snow in the northeastern united states and then a high pressure system just kind of hangs out in the central northern united states pretty warm out there for the west and uh really for the most part it's going to be kind of cool as we head towards early next week colder than average and so what I want to show you here is we're going to look at the trends and then I'm going to look at the upper levels then some other storms and you can see the general trend this is the same hour this is uh, Saturday at you no know, this is Friday at 7 p.m. you can see these are all the same this is the GFS you can see how it's scooting to the northwest so there's actually a trend to the north and west particularly west so a few runs ago, it was actually out here. It's starting to move to the northwest, slowing down a bit, and uh, I would say moving north uh, ever so slightly. Uh, you know, in the winter, this winter has really uh, been really strong for snowstorms, kind of out in this region right here. Suspect that to continue with this system, would not be surprised to see this move slightly more to the west, northwest, as we head towards the event. Now, the upper levels here, this is uh, going to be uh, what we're going to be looking at here. Let me go back to uh, the current hour. So, actually, what we'll do is uh, I'm going to show you. I think we're going to turn off the model trend loop here. And what I'm going to do is show you the upper levels and why this is not happening in terms of... Uh, a big snowstorm. So this is uh, the upper levels. You can see there's plenty of vorticity. This vorticity is acting as spin in the atmosphere, helps lift storms out of the ground. As this thing moves to the central plains, it really does deep strengthen and deepen. It does look a little more impressive, um, especially as we head towards the plains on Saturday morning. But it's really not cut off. It's not closed off, I should say. The, the isobars or the uh, height lines are not closed off. There's a little piece of energy up here kind of competing with it. So you can see this energy up here and a piece of energy out here. What that's doing is that's spreading that storm out. So that's why you get this really massive, large storm. But because of this energy up here, it's actually kind of competing with this. And it's really uh, weakening the backside of the snowstorm, the comma head shape, the blizzard potential for the northern and eastern United States. So this thing, even though it's, it's you can kind of think of it as spreading the wealth out. So that's the thing we're going to have to track as this thing moves into the weekend. How strong is this northern branch up here? The other thing is that this area is not closed off. So it's kind of an open look which uh, typically means more of a progressive, flat-looking snowstorm with your best bet of snow usually on the northeast side if you get a nice high pressure, and we do have that. So that is the uh, biggest threat right now. As you can see, as we head towards uh, Sunday, it does uh, actually kind of merge together, but it's already off the coast by then, shearing out. So 
How much how much snow is the GFS painting, and then how much of the snow is the uh, the old European painting here? As we head towards uh, this weekend and beyond, we'll go out to about Monday here. The the GFS is I mean we're talking widespread snow with this system for the northern U.S. Obviously you're going to get some mountain snows, but it's really not all that strong early on. It really starts to strengthen as it gets uh, oh you know about east of the Dakotas here. And you can see generally in this pink area, you're going to get about a good six to as much as maybe 10 inches. There's actually some areas in here that could get more, especially near the lakes. But generally a moderate to maybe slightly significant near the uh, the lakes. But this isn't as big as some of the other storms we've seen. However, you can see that this is a little bit further south than some of the other storms. And this does put parts of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio and all of Pennsylvania under the gun. I suspect you would see this move slightly to the west northwest than it is right now, but this has generally been consistent with this track. Your be best snow core here is going to really be in Minnesota, Wisconsin, northern Iowa, Michigan, out into New York, where you, again you could see a six to eight inch band set up in that region right there. Around that, all the way down into Nebraska, Western Dakotas, again, down into, you know, parts of Southern Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia. Generally speaking, one to three inches, maybe a little bit more as you get farther north. So that's generally the GFS. The European computer model, as you can see, tracks this thing a little bit farther to the north. This is a Saturday, Sunday, and you can actually see Sunday, pretty significant snow in the northeastern United States uh, out there Saturday night and the Sunday along that north of that warm front. But generally a little bit farther north, and then snowfall amounts for the European computer model. I think the Euro's got a little bit better handle on this. Generally the same, but again, it's a little bit farther west-northwest. So I think this is a better look. This is uh, for the European computer model. Again, generally six to as much as maybe 10 inches in that pinkish area. It's going to vary uh, bit by bit depending on the snow bands. So the uh, SREF model, this is kind of an ensemble for Friday and the Saturday, has the heaviest access right through Minnesota, northwest Iowa, excuse me, northeast Iowa. That's going to be, uh, that's farthest it goes out, but that's uh, Saturday. Now, some analogs. So this is going to be, uh, what are analogs? Well, it's, we're comparing it to the past several snowstorm events that are the most similar to this event. So we're kind of going back into history and you can see this black line. These black lines are uh, surface pressure. These are based on the top 15 snow events that look similar to this. So we can kind of look at past events. This is where the core of the low pressure was on the past 15 events kind of merged together. The red one is where the current uh, one is, the current storm. And you can see it's the same strength same widespread amount, and it, it, but it's a little bit farther to the northeast. Now, this is through uh, Saturday, I believe, and you can actually see the snow amounts here from these uh, systems. Generally speaking, you know, for Saturday-ish, you get about two to six inches in that band up there in the north central United States, particularly Minnesota, Wisconsin, North Dakota, out into New York, and uh, all the way up to Maine even. So, that's going to be uh, that. And then uh, as you head towards, uh, you got the blizzard potential. Blizzard potential is generally weak. It's only got about 20 to 30 percent chance in most of those areas. 20 to 30 percent of the cases had blizzards, particularly in uh, North Dakota and Michigan. As we head towards, uh, this would be uh, the 19th now, or the 18th, the night of the 18th. You can see the uh, 1,008 millibar. That's the average low pressure system for the past 15 events. It's sitting just, you know, right over the Great Lakes in just northeast of Michigan. And then with this event, it's 996. So it's actually a little bit stronger than what the analogs have. And it's kind of in the same area, just a little bit farther to the south. And so you can see this particular storm is a little bit stronger as we head towards the second half of this event, towards Sunday. And you can see uh, the analogs here painting out generally from the Great Lakes and Wisconsin to the far northeastern United States two to as much as about eight to 10 inches here. So the core of the snow, the heaviest snow is gonna be in the far northeastern United States out to the, about the lakes where you have a good four 
to as much as maybe 10 inches or so by these analogs. Now, this system, according to these analogs, is a little bit stronger, okay, and a little bit farther to the south and east. So I would suspect you would actually get a little bit more snow farther south and a little bit more snow than what this is uh, indicating. You know, you get your four to eight inch, 10 inch amounts. You might have a little bit more of a uh, six to 10 inch kind of range in that area and a little bit more widespread. So those are kind of cool tools we're gonna use. I'm gonna definitely start to use these more on the channel and I'm actually gonna use custom data that I'm running on my computer here. And we're gonna get a completely new graphics package for this. Okay, so we're gonna be using this just as much as the models. It's gonna be really sweet, but it takes a lot of time to develop. But if you're interested in that, comment below and uh, we'll definitely get that going. And uh, then also, this is the snow probability for four inches or more. And you can definitely see that up here in the Northeastern United States and as well out into Wisconsin, parts of Michigan, you got about a 60% plus in some of those areas, particularly near the lakes where, uh, you know, near Erie, probably uh, 70, 80% in there. And then the far Northeastern United States, 50 to 60 or so. So, you know, we can uh, kind of use those for, uh, you know, general uh, forecasting here. Those are kind of fun as well. So. What I'm gonna do is uh, upgrade graphics as well. So, so we're gonna have some more uh, forecasted snow maps across the United States that I'm gonna be putting together. My current setup is not not too good. It takes a lot of time, you know, it's slow computer. I just got a new one and I got some new graphics. So we're definitely gonna be upgrading the graphics here on the channel, doing a lot of other new experimental things. Be on the lookout for that. Again, my videos, I'm kind of doing more of a quality over quantity right now because I'm working on this other stuff for the channel. So they're not going to be every day, but when I do put them out, I'm going to, you know, we're going to have some fun with it. And uh, again, going to be a couple, few times a week until I'd say, till we get into February, then I'm going to be posting a lot more regularly and we're going to have a completely new format. We're going to stick to the same old stuff you guys like, but we're just going to have better graphics and better, um, some new segments as well for the channel. So with that said, comment below and give me some ideas if you have any. Subscribe, stay tuned for some updates. Check out that radar time lapse I created. It goes from uh, 2010 to 2020. You can check it out up here. It's a radar time lapse, two hours with uh, binaural beats in the background. So kind of a nice peaceful thing. Fall asleep to it, whatever. Check that out. Share it with a friend. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you soon.